two words, Sputnik. We're being sold to the Kanishi Toy Museum in Tokyo. It's a dangerous world out there. <gasps> Look, Barbie, a big ugly man doll. Ooh, he needs a makeover. You're watching Today I Grew Up. Hey partners, it's Today I Grew Up and I'm here to show off Movie Accurate Stinky Pete in Box. Years ago, about 10 years ago, I found out about this young epoch company, Stinky Pete in Box, that was to movie scale with the rest of the Toy Story Collection toys. But he was released in Tokyo, Japan, I believe, or in Japan in general, and now he goes for over $1,000 on eBay. So I thought of buying that one, but then I found this one, which is also cost $1,000. Yes, I paid $1,000 for a Toy Story toy. Call me crazy, but I've always wanted to complete the round of gang and have a movie accurate Stinky Pete is amazing. I found my friend D-Cop is what he likes to go by, or Cop, on Instagram, so give him a follow. He created this from scratch. Um, he made the box, he made the Stinky Pete, he did everything on it, and I'm just completely blown away. This really looks exactly like the movie to me. Um, it's in scale with our Toy Story Collection toys. This is something Thinkway Toys never gave us, but I wish they would have made for us. Um, here on the side of the box is a really nice window, and I really like it because uh, you can see through it the side of the box just like in the movie. And here on the back we have a really beautiful graphic of Stinky Pete, the prospector. And I really love that it's true to the film. As we know from watching Toy Story 2, Stinky Pete is mint in the box, never been opened, you know? So it's, it's really nice to have these little movie accurate details because the box was a big part of Toy Story 2. So to have this is absolutely amazing. And the box actually function, functions just like the movie. And I'm just, I'm blown away by it. I think it's incredible. So the top here says Stinky Pete, the prospector, posable talking doll with pickaxe from the Woody's Roundup TV show, opens on the side. Woody's Roundup logo, and I really love the front, Woody's Roundup, pull string, nine different sayings, as seen on TV, Stinky Pete the Prospector, posable talking doll with pickaxe from the Woody's Roundup TV show. Again, we have the repeating verbiage with the awesome Woody's Roundup logo in the corner, but how fantastic does Stinky Pete the Prospector look inside of his box? 
it looks fantastic. Um, so on the side of the box, we have this Woody's Roundup detail, Stinky Pete the Prospector. It looks really nice. Um, I think uh, Decop did an amazing job here, and um, it just it looks exactly like the film. I don't think it's too wide. I don't think it's too skinny. It's a perfect um, scale, and it looks fantastic. I really, really love this box from the side as well. On the back, it says um, nine pull string different things. Stinky Pete the Prospector. He talks. There's gold in them hills, <laughs> or you think it's uh, there's gold in them there hills or something. Help! I think I'm stuck. Ah, uh, shucks a -roo. Oh boy, beans for dinner and more. So that's really nice. There's a sign that says gold pointing to the left. Posable talking doll with pickaxe from the Woody's Roundup TV show presents their posable doll collection with Woody, Jesse, Bullseye, and the Crazy Prospector. Collect them all and be sure to watch Woody's Roundup. So that's really neat to have all those awesome. Uh, sayings on the box. I'm absolutely in love with this box. So it's high quality um, it, You know, it's basically a thicker cardboard and this is a print a colorful print that was I assume glued on to this box and um, That's the one thing I can gather from looking at it. It has this awesome easy access door from the front slips right out so it's really easy to do and I had no trouble at all and it function <laughs> it opens just like the movie because in the movie we see Stinky Pete open the box like this and inside it gets even more amazing you have his pickaxe as seen in the movie with electrical tape which is movie accurate the wood inside the box is really well done and like I said there's an acrylic see-through window even on the side here for this cutout so it's just the little details that go a long way and you have this really awesome uh, graphic of Stinky Pete and I love that it's electrical tape, so it's not going to damage the box. You can peel it off, and it won't damage the paint from the box. And then tape it back, and I can access the pickaxe. If I want to, I can take it out and put the tape back. And there we go. We have the pickaxe, and it looks really nice as well. And that's just really neat that the box really is a home run. It really delivers. It's exactly like the movie, the same scale. So I wanted to test this theory to see if it's pretty movie accurate. So as you guys know, in Toy Story 2, this deleted scene was deleted. And so you two are oh. absolutely identical? <laughs> you know, I'm sure I could get you a part in Toy Story 3. I'm sorry, are we back? Oh, all right, girls. Lovely talking with you. Yes, any time you'd like some tips on acting, I'd be glad to chat with you. All right, off you go then. So I can't help but laugh with that. Yeah, that was pretty suggestive for kids. I can see why they decided to delete it. So that was in a DVD release years ago. But it was really I thought it would be really funny to try to put a couple of Barbies in here and see if it worked. So there you go. It is very spacious. This box will fit Stinky Pete and two Barbies and then and, and then some. There's a lot of room in here. So it's a very roomy box and I think that's very true to the film. Honestly, you couldn't get more movie accurate than this, uh, in my personal opinion. I think this is probably the best you're going to find. Um, the bottom of the box is also um, a dark blue, which looks really nice, and it completes the look of the box. So getting the tape measure here, I saw it was about 10 and a half inches wide, and on the height, it was about um, 15 inches, exactly. And then the width, I didn't really show it, but it's about 7 and 3 quarters inches mm -hmm. width. And Sneaky Pete himself is over a foot tall. He actually, with the hat, is about 13 inches. Um, so he is pretty tall and I think very movie accurate in scale with the toys. So here's Sneaky Pete out of the box. Amazing. I really, really love the way this looks. So I'm really excited. I got a certificate of authenticity included in this. It says, um, this definitive Stinky Pete, the prospector, is a replica lovingly handmade by D-Cop. He is a vintage pull string prospector doll from the fictional TV show Woody's Roundup. He had never been opened and was still mint in the box. I hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed creating the character. Signed John Lasseter, the director of Toy Story 2. So that was a really nice touch to include. So it was really cool. Um, on the back I noticed it came with a transparent peelable sticker that I could probably reuse. And it's the prospector here. So that's really nice. 
that was something that was a nice bonus. And then he also sent me a second certificate of authenticity. So I had my optional choice of did I want him on the right or the left? I personally like the one that where Stinky Pete is on the right. So, but you know, it's cool to have both. And here is Stinky Pete, the prospector. He actually came all the way from, I believe, Algeria, shipped to China, and then from China to America. So this Stinky Pete has traveled the world and made him sway to my house. And I couldn't be more excited that it's a movie accurate prop replica, something that never existed, that Thinkway Toys should have made, but Thinkway Toys never made this. So I had to get this commissioned so that I could complete my roundup gang because after waiting, you know, over a decade, I've been collecting Toy Story toys for over 10 years. It was time to get a Stinky Pete to add to my collection. So as you can understand, having this is a dream come true. That's something I've wanted for over 10 years, if not more. Um, to have this Stinky Pete is just incredible. I love it so much. And the fact that it actually functions like the movie is even crazier to me. So this is handmade. It's hand sculpted. Um, I assume made by clay, hand painted, hand sculpted. Everything was made from scratch, um, from head to toe. The details are there. I really love the hat design. I think it definitely, definitely nails the Toy Story 2 Stinky Pete that we known. Um, he's the only villain that I probably really love because he completes that roundup gang you know when you when you first see woody and you find his story and you learn about the prospector and that it goes with bullseye and jesse and there was this old tv show that was canceled um it just really brings back those feels from that from that movie toy story 2 is arguably my favorite movie of all time so this means a lot to me and this hat is very solid so it almost feels like if I were to drop it, it could break, which kind of scares me. But because I'm going to display this mainly in the box and leave it there, um, I'm not too worried about it. But keep in mind, it is heavy. It is sturdy. Um, I don't think it's going to break it necessarily, but I definitely wouldn't trust dropping it on the ground. That's just me. Uh, so this is what Stinky Pete looks like without his hat. Um, he kind of looks like Santa Claus, huh? A little bit. <laughs> anyway, I love the way D-Cop uh, shaped the beard. He's got his white hair and the skin looks great. The paint apps are amazing. I did notice that the hat smudged a little paint off of his head. So that kind of concerned me, but I used a little saliva and rubbed it with my finger and it came right off. So that's the good news. The hat's not going to permanently damage the toy, but I was able to um, wipe that off. So yeah, that's that actually worked out really well. Um, I'm just really happy that it worked out and <laughs> didn't get damaged in shipping. I really think this looks like the toy mode, which is what I wanted, the toy mode Stinky Pete Prospector, but his likeness is still there. Um, the blush is not too vibrant, but it's vib vibrant enough. He has his little gold tooth in his mouth, that shiny. So that was totally nailed. His eyebrows, his eyes look like they're alive. I really love his eyes. They have some glossiness to it. So they, um, it looks like his eyes move in the light. It's kind of creepy, but kind of cool. <laughs> so I really love that. He looks like he's come to life. And I feel like I stole Stinky Pete out of the movie. That's how reali realistic he looks. Um, that toy mode lip, you know, where it's kind of droopy to the side and his eyes are kind of a little cross-eyed and but it just looks exactly like stinky pete to me um let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this stinky pete do you think it's the most accurate stinky pete ever when i first saw this i was like this is the one this is the stinky pete that's the most movie accurate in the whole world i feel um so decop congratulations you've created a work of art you've created something impossible into possible and this is amazing to own. Um, so the rest of his body is a soft, plush, squishy material. There's nothing really in there but cotton. Um, his hands are actually made of clay or resin. Not really sure. But it's the same material of the head. So the head is very uh, firm. So are the hands. Now these are really nice. They're like metal. It looks like brass. Um, they're actually magnetic. So they're magnetic clasps onto the overalls here. So... You can take them off and they come back on. What I love is that it's magnetic. This is so you can get into the voice box area, which I'm going to show you here. But the denim is and the stitching is just amazing. It looks perfect. Um, 
it's real metal it's not plastic it's actually metal and it looks etched i don't know how he did it uh, to be honest but it's amazing he has like a stretchy fabric jean material it's it's very much denim it feels like real jeans um and he has deep pockets so you can put his pickaxe in there um i noticed that the pocket is very deep so it fits all the way in his pocket if you wanted to do that you can stuff it in his overalls as well and it doesn't really it's just amazing that it functions like real overalls um the shoes are not removable which i don't expect them to be they're solid and they're also the same materials ahead in the hands i believe um but they look really nice i like this patch detail on the back it looks like it was hand sewn and you can see here as i fold it over it's like a real fabric cloth patch material and he has a pull string of course which is super awesome um we'll definitely get into the voice voice phrases in a bit um, but i just wanted to show you the up close details his hand is also um very nice it actually um is able to i mean you could put the pickaxe in his hand and it looks good but you would have to hold it in place or tape it in there or something I'm not going to do that, but I just want to show you he can hold it, but you need to help him hold it because it won't stay. So his hands do not hold it on its own, but technically it fits in his hand, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so that's that's something I wish it could have done to hold the pickaxe, but it's not a big deal for me. Um, I just like that it comes with the accessory because that's how it's like in the movie. This is my only gripe with this is that his head is too heavy. I wish it was more of a plastic, maybe 3D printed head, because if you use solid clay or a solid porcelain material, whatever this is, you can see that it's too heavy. That's why he can only stand with a, with a stand, which I understand he has tiny legs, feet. So I don't expect that, but his head is top heavy and it's really hard. But at the same time, it's movie accurate, I, I feel like, in terms of his fabric and the look of it. Now, functionally, this is the only drawback I feel like is just his head's a little too heavy, but it's high quality, you know. Um, I really like this, you know, wrap around bandana around him. Uh, love the material that's printed on there. It looks exactly like the film. Um, no complaints about that. The red shirt's well done. The overalls are 10 out of 10. The stitching is 10 out of 10. Um, the metal, like I said, the buckles there are 10 out of 10. Everything just, the paint, the application, the detailed work, you can just tell how many hours went into this. Um, even the pickaxe alone, its of course it's solid plastic, like we see it in the film, but it looks sharp. <laughs> and I was like testing it on my finger. It's a little sharp. It has a sharp end. I don't think it'll cut you, but it's definitely not a kid's toy. So just keep this in mind. If you do buy this, this is meant for collectors. It's not meant for play. It's meant for display, if that makes sense. Um, definitely not a kid's toy, but I love the Stinky Pete. Nonetheless, the little drawbacks don't bug me enough. It's going to be a display piece, so that's why I'm not really too worried. On the back here, it takes little tiny batteries. I don't show it, but it has these little round batteries, kind of the ones you put in Christmas ornaments. It takes three of those little round guys, and it's it's actually a Disney voice box, the same one that Jesse has, I think, or Woody from the Disney store, and I believe it's been modified because it plays Stinky Pete phrases. Um, nine of them so you just unscrew it um, add three little round batteries the, the little flat ones uh, screw it back in and then you can put it back in his into his back yeah it just and then we can test the pull string and hear the phrases came with this amazing stand, Woody's Roundup logo, and I, what I really love about it is that it looks like it was um, professionally 3D printed or etched. Um, the wood grain is, you know, very solid piece of wood here. It's very thick, solid wood. 
Um, and yeah, a nice wire metal stand. It's very sturdy. It holds up Stinky Pete really well. And the actual logo is kind of, you know, it's very, the grain of the wood, you can feel it. If you put your fingers on the logo, you feel the indention of the design. So it was very much laser engraved or etched, whatever you call it. I don't know how the process was done on this, but it's very impressive and I love that detail. This is a really amazing stand and it completes the Woody's Roundup collection for me to have something movie replica that can hold up Stinky Pete. Now, if you guys want these prints, um, I got them from my friend Toy Story Now, Jordy. He, he provided a link you can download. So check the description below of this video. You'll have a free download link to get these images so you can print them out. I backed them with cardboard, you know, poster board. I just used a glue stick, cut them out, cut out the poster board. There you have car cardboard cutouts of the Woody's Roundup set that you can see in Toy Story 2. Now they're not exactly movie scale because I don't want them giant. They're bigger in the movie, but I kind of like this scale because I feel like it won't take up as much space on my shelf and it still looks good with the Woody's Roundup gang. Um, one thing to note, I really love this Toy Story Collection Bullseye, you know, Woody's Roundup logo because it matches exactly the logo from Stinky Pete's box. I just realized that, you know, the Woody's Roundup brand or logo for Woody's Roundup toys is the same on Bullseye Stand. So I thought that was a really neat detail to tie in the Roundup Gang. Um, so we're gonna put the Roundup Gang together here so you guys can see. Here it is, guys, my movie accurate Woody's Roundup Gang. Here on the left, I have a 2010 Toy Story White Logo Collection Bullseye. The Jesse is actually a modded Jesse with a Disney Store body with a signature collection head. And then I painted the eyebrows brown so that's what you're looking at for the modded Jessie. That's why she looks more movie accurate than Stinky Pete in the box, which we just reviewed. And then my JC Alva custom Toy Story Collection Woody um, with obviously the toy mode head. So I really like this because this looks like toy mode. It looks like I stole it from Big L. It looks like a movie prop, like I took it out of the movie. And that was always my goal here with these Toy Story toys. I wanted the most film accurate possible because this doesn't exist in real life. It's a computer animation. How can I get these toys in real life? And this is the way I was able to do that. Maybe on this table, you're looking at over $2,000 then some, but it was worth it for me to collect my dream collection. Woody's Roundup Gang, movie accurate. I'm super happy. I'm gonna be making some live actions going forward with this, and it's we're gonna have a great time. So remember, please remember to subscribe. I just hit 40,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for the support. It's my dream to be a YouTuber, and you're helping make those dreams come true. As always, guys, thank you for watching, for liking, for subscribing. Share with your friends, and I'll see you guys on the next video review.